My name is Alex. I'm a product designer, and basically in my free time, uh, I enjoy creating different resources and uh, for, for for the design community. And today, uh, I'd like to present you my uh, uh, pet project, uh, which is called FigGPT. Essentially, uh, this is a Figma, a Figma plugin that helps uh, designers, uh, UX writers, uh, product managers, Anyone basically write copy uh, right inside uh, Figma using ChatGPT. Uh, so uh, um, I prepared like several use cases. Basically, I have only three slides in my presentation, <laughs> so it will be live demo. And uh, as you know, uh, it can be pretty uh, difficult to write copy sometimes, basically in my company, when I receive uh, a copy from the copywriters, for example, from the product, it's not, you know, perfect uh, most of the time. And we have to spend uh, a lot of time iterating through the copy. And I just wanted to make this process like way easier. So I have uh, several um, use cases. I'd like to present to you. So let's start with the first one and jump in. So um, let's say I build an a landing page for a project management tool. And uh, I've been provided with some copy from uh, my team. Here you can see uh, the landing page. And uh, this is the FigGPT plugin on the right. So immediately I can see that the, this copy is not perfect and I want to make, for example, the description shorter. And in the plugin, there are like a set of quick uh, quick actions you can use. Uh, let's say I want to make this paragraph shorter. I just click, wait a little bit, and here we go. It's kind of fixed. The same I can do with the, with the title here. There are like many predefined actions, like you can make something longer, you can break down text to several bullet points. And if you want, you can write actually a custom uh, prompt here. So uh, let's say uh, we have some Laura Mipson here. Let's say I can ask AI to generate, generate some uh, random text. And um, yeah, just run it here. You can put whatever you want. You can put like generate some text for the LinkedIn page about the project management tool. Uh, but the problem, of course, of this text because uh, AI doesn't aware uh, about the content of this page. And there is another feature uh, that you can use. Like if I select the full page, and there is a little button here. Let's say I want to create a title for this page. So I just select it, click this button, and basically it passed all the content from this page to the custom prompt uh, window. And here I can um, say something like um, create a tagline from this text. And then I just select the layer, run it, and boom, we have a title. I can like iterate through this like as many uh, uh, times as I want. Actually, I prefer to do it like in, in a little bit weird way. Uh, like let's say uh, I can just copy this here and just put like a random text, whatever, and do whatever. Let me just duplicate it and do something like this. Uh, and I can run it. So I selected multiple layers and this custom prompt will be uh, run for each one. So let me just fix it a little bit for you. So here I have like a lot of different options here. 
and I can choose from them. Let's say I like this one, maybe I can, and I can copy it to the page. And actually, if you want to clean this up, let's say I want to remove uh, quote marks from this text. You can also do it with the plugin. You can just say remove quote marks and it should be like this. So this is, uh, this checkbox basically ignore whatever is selected. I don't want this in this case. And yeah, just run it and my copy is fixed. You can do like uh, anything you want this way. And then I just copy it here and we have a nice title. One of the, the third use case is uh, very important actually for UI designers uh, is translation to different languages. And especially it's important when you design like things like mobile apps and um, you want to test your, uh, your UI in different languages. So you can also do it with the plugin pretty easily. You just copy the whole frame, uh, you know, select it. Uh, and I can say translate to Spanish, for example. Um, yeah, and there is a check mark to preserve text size. So uh, in this case, AI will respect to the size of the text. So the, for the button, it will be just two words. For the title, it will be about this size. And let's just run it. And boom, we have a screen in, uh, in Spanish. And you can do actually uh, all of these edits in different languages. So there is a feature uh, here. It's like output language. And I can select, um, um, where is Spanish? Spanish here. And basically just do whatever I want with the text in Spanish. Like this. It's a little bit shorter. I believe not ideal. I don't know Spanish, but I hope it's good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, uh, for this case, a uh, pretty popular one, like let's say I have a component, um, like a user card, and I want to populate it with some data. Uh, let me just copy it here. Um, and let's say I want to generate some, like a full name. Here and here in the plugin, there is a custom actions you can create, uh, and I pre-created actually a full name, and I can just click and quickly populate uh, the like the real names here, and let's say we need to populate the job title, and I can do it as well. So I can type like create, um, let's say random, uh, funny. Uh, job title, and I'm going to ignore text here. Uh, yeah, can run it again. Sometimes it just you know duplicates stuff, but it uh, comes down to the creativity of the AI. But yeah, I mean I like this one. <laughs> Hack officer sounds fun. Yes, yeah, so uh, this is how you can populate your designs with the kind of real data. And you can always ask uh, to the some, let's say, my company works, uh, creates product for, for the salespeople. And I also can provide some information uh, uh, like the seam uh, I need to create copy for and uh, it will work. So the last but not least uh, use case uh, is guidelines. It's like a global uh, rules you can apply to the plugin in general. Let's say uh, in my company, we have a guideline uh, to, for writing copy. Uh, and I can basically upload this guideline to the plugin and it will apply the rules of writing for all actions of this plugin, if it makes sense. So uh, 
to make it obvious, I can uh, go to settings and uh, ask something like, just to make it visible, like de decorate with emojis, like something like this. And if I, let's say, perform any actions, let's say I want to break this down, this text, to five uh, parts. Um, as you can see, they are decorated with symmetries. And if I do any other action, like, let's say, make it longer, um, it takes more time a little bit. That? Here we go. We have a modules in the text as well. So this way you can apply any role globally to all actions in this plugin. Yeah, so this is pretty much it for the presentation. Uh, yeah, so uh, I hope uh, that uh, you get an idea of how you can improve your workflow in Figma with AI uh, right now. And uh, I hope that we, as, like as designers, can leverage actually the powerful potential of the AI and because it's our future and we better be prepared, you know. So, yeah, questions? This is actually kind of the ne next version I'm, I'm working on. The first one is already in the, like, in the Figma community store, so you can get it pretty easily. There are some problems with the UX because it was created basically like in maybe two weeks. Uh, I created a prototype basically in like four hours, the first prototype, but it took like some time to release it, prepare for release, so... Yeah, I actually getting a lot of feedback, people just reaching out and uh, suggesting like features, what to improve. One of them is actually uh, um, a language, basically a language selector. It was like very important, obviously, because uh, people from the all all around the, the world use on this tool. So yeah, I'm collecting and trying to prioritize. Basically, uh, through the testing, so I have a group of users I talk to and I rely mostly uh, on their opinion and also I have some analytics on uh, what actions are more po popular and less popular. So uh, basically a plugin is connected to Amplitude and I use it for like tracking uh, whatever is happening in this plugin. Yeah, I guess mostly just for now I just use our feedback uh, and my friends. <laughs> Technically not limited, uh, so you can put whatever you want to put there. Uh, there is no. I, I know that in the UI it looks like just a text field, uh, but it's still in development. And actually, maybe I leave it this uh, way for the release uh, just to test it more, because this is kind of tricky a little bit. <laughs> Like, honestly, right right now, I'm just having fun with the AI in general. Uh, and uh, one of the recent projects was just, uh, I tried to connect ChatGPT to Framer. And basically, I created a copy of myself uh, and uploaded it to, like, to the Framer. And so it was like Alex GPT that can uh, like answer questions. It was pretty fun. Like, I guess mostly my intention is I'm just doing it for myself and trying to learn more about AI in general and figure out how it works. And it already pays off because uh, like at work, I can advise on some points and I have a lot of, I would say, easy conversations with the data scientists. Uh, so it's kind of really helps a lot. I'm glad that uh, the plugin is pretty popular and I can, you know, test things for myself. <music>